Lots of smiles here in Darlington this morning as GCSE results came in. A stark difference from last week when A-level students found many of their results had been downgraded by that now notorious algorithm. Obviously, that was scrapped, so today's results were based on teacher assessments. One straight A-star student told me that although she knows she deserves those results, she feels that like there'll always be a stigma around them because they never actually sat the exams. And as you're about to be reminded, nothing is ever quite safe Nothing has been quite plain sailing with these results. Although the GCSE part was sorted, uh, schools and colleges were surprised with an announcement late yesterday. In just 10 minutes, the students at Carmel College in Darlington are due to arrive to collect their GCSE and BTEC results. Re we've reprinted them all. But the staff are still frantically packing the envelopes after a last minute decision by the exam board yesterday afternoon to pull BTEC results to bring them in line with GCSEs. It's just something we could have all done without, really. So you're thrilled when you got that in? Absolutely. <laughs> Not. <laughs> the fact that we had to take all the grades out and reprint was just an added pressure to what has been an absolutely horrendous season, really. Downstairs and the students start flowing in. They're nervous, but relieved that whatever is in that envelope will have been decided by the teachers that know them, rather than the algorithm that caused all the chaos with A-levels last week. I was expecting to fail everything last week and I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, we're really pleased for it. Really pleased, over the moon. Were you worried? Um, yeah, I think you had to be. I just think you had to be, and especially with the way the A-level results were the week before. Uh, very happy, yeah, done well. So um, I think my mum will be crying when I get home. So I think that's something we can all be happy about. Um, it'll be a celebration tonight. I think it, young people were put on, on the back burner, really. I don't think there's any reason that the exams couldn't have been sat. But for those who took a BTEC, there's still a wait. Well, I was obviously a bit disappointed because what, like, what if I wanted to enrol... And I won't be able to show them any a level that I got, so I might not be able to enrol in the sixth form for it. It was just a bit of a disappointment to further. They've had like five months to sort it out. Grades for the class of COVID are higher than last year in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. The principal here in Darlington says the teacher assessed grades are robust and credible. The reason why they're higher is because teachers can't account for nerves on the day or other variables. He says the grades should have been used from the start. I do think it was preventable. Um, we submitted our grades by that deadline in May. Um, they've had those results. They've had their algorithm, you'd have thought, it worked out by then, in which case it shouldn't have taken that many months to actually produce a final set. Um, they could have been released earlier. Decisions could have been made earlier. The government confirmed today that universities in England would honour all offers made this year although accepted that some Year 13s who missed out before the algorithm was scrapped may have to defer until next year. Now schools are looking to the years below and how it will affect them. I think the Year 12s are, the, are my biggest concern at the moment. The biggest fear is, is that the place is available next summer for these students. If a lot of the universities ask them to defer, that means certainly a percentage of those places will be taken up. So many students have been asked now to defer. Does that mean Year 12 will struggle to get into the, the more selective, uh, the more prestigious courses? For those students who are not going on to further education, what does the North East hold for them at this moment in time? Some of our students have uh, struggled to find apprenticeships. Some of the companies that would normally offer one um, won't necessarily be offering them this year. They're already in a situation where they've either furloughed or made staff redundant. They're not going to be getting into a situation where they expand the apprenticeship scheme in that particular organisation. This year has been like no other in education, and the strains and uncertainty of last week are by no means gone, as universities face challenges in capacity and schools prepare to fully reopen in just two weeks. Well, many GCSE students got the results they wanted, but this results season has been marred by chaos. The fiasco around grading has thrown the entire education sector into disarray. So how did we get here? Who is to blame and how has this affected the hopes and dreams of the COVID generation? Like thousands of teenagers across the country, here they've been anxiously following every twist and turn of the exam saga. And today came relief 
Their GCSE grades have been awarded by their school's predictions. <laughs> Some people will still be arguing that the fact that the grades are now higher, it, it devalues the top marks, which is an argument you can understand. But I think given this year, it's been an unfortunate year. This is a um, most accurate representation of what I would have got, definitely. So it actually feels fair? Yeah. The government has a handle it in a professional manner, I would say. I have been watching the news and recently when the government decided to change that uh, we're going to get our centre assess grades, I was overjoyed. My mum just told me to, to, to send her a screenshot of this right now, so that's, that's the first thing I have to do and I think they'll be very proud of me. Better get on the phone to it. Yeah, 100%, 100%. The smiles of today are contrast to the stress of just over a month ago when these students first spoke to us about their fears of being downgraded. It's just, it's just really upsetting. I think there's going to be an even greater disparity. So how has the results process been so chaotic when even teenagers themselves were raising the alarm? On 18th March, the Prime Minister announced all exams were cancelled. By April 3rd, Ofqual published instructions for teachers and said it would carry out a standardisation process. In the same month, concerns were being publicly and privately raised, with fears that already disadvantaged young people could lose out. On July 8th, this is what former DfE director John Coles, a mathematician himself, told us. Ofqual need to build in at least a bit of leniency into the system. If they don't build leniency into the system, then we'll have equal numbers of winners and losers. But actually, the losers lose a lot and the winners don't gain very much. Channel 4 News understands shortly after this interview, he wrote to the Secretary of State and then expressed his concerns directly to Gavin Williamson in a meeting. By 11th July, Parliament's Education Select Committee raised its worries. Even after watching Scotland's chaos unfold, the UK Department of Education continued to express confidence in Ofqual's process, and thousands of A-level students received downgrades. Until the U-turn four days later. Over the weekend, it became clearer to me that there were uh, a level of uh, uh, the number of students who were getting grades that, uh, frankly, they shouldn't have been getting and should have been doing a lot better. And the evidence, both from Ofqual and other external bodies. And so the emotional roller coaster ends for 16-year-olds at least, mostly on a high. Though some are still incredulous at the fact it took protests. It feels a bit ridiculous because you'd expect the government to be the ones to lead, but it turns out some teenagers are doing the work for them. That's fantastic. Well done. We can be more proud of you. I can't claim to understand what it's like to be a government minister, and I'm sure it's been incredibly difficult for them as well, but we raised the concern. We were, we were clear that there were going to be serious issues with, it, with this year's results um, right from when the guidelines came out. So um, if anything, I just hope we'll listen to a little bit more as we go forward. Will future warnings be better heeded or does a blame game begin? In his very first speech, the Prime Minister had pledged he would take personal responsibility for kids getting a superb education. Who will he now hold accountable. So why weren't those warnings heeded by the government at Westminster? I've been speaking to the school's minister for England, Nick Gibb, and I asked him about the warning weeks ago by the Department for Education's former director general, Sir John Coles. He told Mr Gibb that the system could lead to hundreds of thousands of students being given the wrong grades. Well, I spoke to John Coles, we had a long conversation, and he made a very compelling argument about the model rather than the mm. algorithm, that he felt that the, that the way the model was constructed based on the historic data of schools uh, might lead to, well, he thought would lead to, uh, disadvantaged young people suffering bigger drops in their grades from the teacher assessment. And were you convinced? I, I was, I was, the, the argument was compelling, so I made a call and a meeting with Ofqual uh, in mid-July. We had a long discussion about this issue. Actually, um, when, you, when we came to the results last week, you did not see disadvantaged young people's grades dropping significantly more than other socioeconomic backgrounds. And we did not see a widening of the table. But what we did see was chaos. Yes, but that was caused by a different issue. It was caused not by the model, which was consulted on, and it was, I think it was the right model, and it was, everyone supported it, most people supported it. Problem arose from the implementation of that uh, model 
uh, at the exam uh, at, at the grade level through the algorithm. And that's where the problems began to emerge on Thursday and Friday, when you saw those heartbreaking stories you know, of young people who had worked solidly for two years, were expecting A's or B's, and, and went to get their grades, and there were three D's. Absolutely heartbreaking. It shouldn't have happened, and that's why we took swift action. When did you see the algorithm for the first time? I saw it when it was published on Thursday. Reg the regulator is an independent body, but all these issues about who saw where, what, when, will be dealt with in any inquiries that come up. The terrifying thing about this is that government has failed, failed completely, and failed a generation of young people who had expectations of much better from you as human beings than any wretched computer program. Well, yes, something clearly went wrong, and, and that's what the inquiry will look at. But what we wanted to do was to make sure young people had their qualifications, despite the fact none of them had taken the exam. But after all the problems in Scotland, yeah. even then you didn't ask to see the algorithm. The problem in Scotland was caused by the model, uh, which was, we believed, uh, which was that they, they, they didn't take into account prior attainment. So we did raise these issues with the, the independent regulator when Scotland arose. Fingers have been pointed at Ofqual, and um, I imagine you will also point your finger at Ofqual. Um, but what it seems so extraordinary is that they were being asked to do something which had never been done before in history, and there was no ministerial oversight at all. And you'll say, that that's because they're an independent department, we don't have any say over them. No, we were, we were uh, overseeing the model. Yeah, but never seeing, the, 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 never seeing any of the programme. Well, they, all those issues about how the model was converted into a mathematical algorithm by the experts at the independent regulator. All those issues will be dealt with uh, in an inquiry. But and with respect, Minister, we don't need an inquiry yet to tell us that you lot failed and failed dreadfully and need surely to apologise and probably go. Well, I am very sorry, as I said at the beginning of this. Are you going to resign? Session. I thought about these issues over the weekend very seriously when I saw the tragic stories of young people getting the results that were unjust, that they did not. But I thought it would be the wrong thing to do because there would be an inquiry. Having depended so heavily on Ofqual, didn't somebody in government need to keep a daily eye on what they were doing? Because if they had, they'd have known it was going wrong. Well, I'm, look, all these issues... No, I, I'm asking you such a simple human question. We Give were, me a human answer. We, we were continually uh, vigilant about whether this model was going to deliver the right issue. You have to rely on the experts uh, in exam technique and algorithms to convert that model into what went right. Well, now, looking ahead, schools are going to reopen in September. The government's put its reputation on it and yet they've been given a vast amount of new work to do. Can they still open in September? Yes, they can. It's very important that schools open in September. We, we did open... The schools you accept they've got a lot of work to do, extra work. They have got work to do, of course. They, a lot of it. And they're making schools safe with extra hygiene, extra cleaning. School children will be in those bubbles. It's hard to think of a parallel crisis that has affected young people, indeed all the people, so very badly. Where's the Prime Minister in all this? Well, the Prime Minister is in constant touch on this issue. I've spoken to the well, Prime where Minister. where is he? He's not in Downing Street. I've spoken to the Prime Minister twice this week about it. He wants to make sure that young people get the grades that they deserve. He wants this thing sorted out. Let's be candid. If, if, if the Prime Minister of the day were on the job, he'd give up his holiday, come down and take charge. This, this issue is being sorted out. We are working night and day to make sure young people get their grades. And today, 600,000 GCSE students are getting their grades delivered by the exam boards in 48 hours flat. The A-levels have been recalculated and were delivered to schools yesterday to give to students today. We are addressing, every time there are issues, we are addressing them and dealing with them. And the BTEC will want to make sure that they get the fair result uh, despite the adjustments that have been made to GCSEs and A-levels and they will get their results. My expectation is they'll get their results next week. Well, there have been accusations that students in disadvantaged areas of England had their exams downgraded most dramatically by the algorithms, while pupils at private schools were less affected. Some of this criticism has come from Conservative MPs, including Robert Halfon, who's chairman of the Education Select Committee. I spoke to him a little earlier and I began by asking him how he assessed the government's performance. Well, it's been a, a mess. Um, it's uh, clearly uh, this shouldn't have happened. 
we have uh, thousands of uh, students um, who uh, didn't get the grades uh, that they uh, deserved. That is being remedied um, with the uh, move towards the predicted grades. Um, we need to make sure that those uh, hundreds of thousands of students who've been doing BTECs get their grades as soon as possible. Uh, we need to learn the lessons from this and find out what on earth has gone on in terms of Ofqual and the Department for Education, why um, these things happened, what questions were asked, uh, what was expected at the time, uh, did uh, the uh, algorithm, was enough examination done in terms of the effect that this uh, algorithm would have had. Now, back in July, your Education Select Committee raised some concerns. Do you think those concerns were listened to by Ofqual and the Department of Education? Uh, clearly, uh, they weren't for the most part because we urged that the so-called uh, algorithm model, the standardisation model, would be made public so it would be subject to uh, scrutiny. Uh, that didn't happen. We, we asked that because we thought that if it was subject to public scrutiny, then changes uh, could have been made. So do you think there's been a lack of transparency from Ofqual? I think there's been so many fingers in this uh, very unfortunate pie um, that has been baked, um, sadly, for um, many, many thousands of pupils and students across the country. Um, so that's why we need to find out what went wrong and learn the lessons from. This isn't necessarily just about pointing figures, it's to make sure uh, such a uh, uh, such a occurrence doesn't happen again. You've long been an advocate for social mobility. This government has talked about levelling up the country through education. Do you think that project is a bit tainted now? Well, I do think that uh, this has been a very bad year in terms of education, uh, partly because of the national pandemic, but also because millions of children have not been learning despite the efforts of individual uh, schools and teachers and support staff the fact is that we know that millions of children have not been learning have had very little contact with their teachers we already had issues in terms of attainment between disadvantaged pupils and their better off peers it's likely this is going to be exacerbated by what has gone on during the pandemic and uh, the government need to make sure that education is both about uh, addressing social injustice, but also extending the ladder of opportunity for uh, uh, thousands of uh, pupils and uh, students who go attend school every day.